The brass statue of a lone human stood guard solemnly at the main entrance of the Danheim shuttleport. The figure stood with their fingers laced together atop a large Nordic axe as they gazed down the busy, hovercraft-filled street and parkway leading to the doors it guarded. Those who lived here after the calamity paid the statue no mind. After all, every shuttleport had a statue out front. Why was this one so special? Well, my sweet summer child, allow me to tell the story of a man known only by a title. The Berserk here. The Megalomanians were an empire built on the backs of slaves. They conquered and enslaved any planet deemed necessary of their test. A brutal bombardment with biological weapons that turned sentients into mindless, bloodthirsty animals that clawed and bit at those they had once called friends and family. But there was one caveat. Like any disease, many individuals of many species would be naturally immune to it by sheer chance. The ideal slaves if they could survive the infected. I remember the feeling of hopelessness in the shuttle port, as the hundreds of still sentient beings gathered there to evacuate, hopeful the shuttles would slip past the slavers. You could hear the screams and roars of the infected closing in through the thick plasteel walls. I remember the human that burst through the doors, axe in hand, covered in viscera. I thought he was there to kill us, but no. He marched up to the unoccupied front desk and picked up the intercom microphone before speaking. They know where they are, and you can hear them getting closer, can't you? I know you're scared. I know you will want this to be a very bad dream, but this is real, and I need you to listen to me. Looking out over the silent and somber gathering, the human nodded softly before speaking again. The shuttle gates are armored, and each one can hold thirty of you. It may seem like I'm asking you to lock yourself in a cage. Well, I am, but not for the reason you think. He pounded the bottom of his axe's handle against the tiles making an echoing thunk noise. I'll hold them off as long as possible. Try to thin the herd as much as possible until the shuttles get here. Please, head to the nearest gate and lock both doors behind you, in case any get past me. There was hesitation as the human set down the microphone. Then, seemingly as one, we stood and filed into the armored gate rooms between the landing pad and shuttle port. The things we heard, the things we saw, they're unforgettable. One of the shuttle port security guards had pulled up a feed of the entrance so we could watch, and many did out of a morbid curiosity. The human wrapped a chain around the handles of the swing doors of the shuttle port as he stepped outside. An extra hurdle for the infected to jump before turning to face the street behind him. He reached up to his neck and yanked something away, wrapping it around his hand as he hefted his axe. The infected came as a wave, an unyielding tide of slavering, shrieking bodies that crashed over the human, briefly obscuring him from view as he swung his axe for the first time. For minutes, all we saw was the occasional glint of that massive, curved axe head, as it cleaved flesh and split bone with a practiced, elegant ease. Then, slowly, a small opening in the tide of bodies showed the human's dire situation. They lost an eye, blood streamed from the socket and down their face which was twisted in an expression of burning rage. His clothing was torn, one leg was shaken and unsteady where it had been gashed open. The many bodies lay piled around the human. The tide of infected seemed endless and the human was faltering. The axe swung clumsily, biting deep but not as deep as before as he felt infected bean after infected bean. Eventually the tire swallowed him, making him disappear from view as we watched the screaming masses slam against the door to the airport. That feeling of hopelessness settling in again. Then there was a sound. A sound that didn't belong to the screaming masses. A roar bellowed from deep in the writhing horde of monsters. It grew louder and louder, until one could swear they felt it shaking the very earth as a half dozen of the infected were flung skyward as the human burst into view amongst the horde. The roar came from them as with renewed vigour the axe came swinging down, cleaving through four of the infected in a single blow. The human fought and fought, and then fought some more as the horde began to thin, fell by the human's axe in burning fury. With each swing the horde became thinner and thinner, until at last the axe's head bit deep into the last infected's head, before it was yanked loose. The human stood alone then, amongst the carnage and bodies that lie knee-deep around him. He gazed off into the now silent distance, his arms had darkened to a deep purple colour, his eye long dumb bleeding as the human slowly fell to their knees. Putting his hands wide apart on the axe's half, he raised it above his head, horizontal to the ground. Then he slumped forward, Axe still clamped in his lifeless hands. I heard the shuttle touch down outside in the deafening silence.
that fell with the human. I placed the bundle of roses I had bought at the statue's feet. We'd only found out why the human had done it after he died. A journal found in the apartment registered in his name, the first page a prayer to a long-forgotten god, now embossed on a plaque between the statue's feet. All father, make me fast and accurate. Let my blade strike too. Make my arm swifter than any who would seek to destroy me. Grant me victory over my foes, and when my death comes, let not my last thought be, if I had only, but rather, let the halls of Valhalla ring with my name, and let me die atop a mountain of enemy corpses. Skull! 